I am a native Floridian, as Crow found out yesterday. Yes, I had three native Floridians in my house yesterday. Yeah. Oh, what a treat. <laughs> and that's, but that's unusual. Yeah. That's very unusual. There's a lot fewer of us than there are people who come outside. Okay, what is permaculture? Now, I have this long list of, uh, it's not in your, your handout. And I read through them all and I sort of read them to my brother and I'm saying, okay, what do you think of this one? What do you think of this one? because it's really kind of hard to describe what permaculture truly is. But this was the best explanation that anybody gave. Permaculture is a holistic approach to landscape design and human culture. It is an attempt to integrate several dis disciplines, including biology, ecology, geography, agricultural, uh, architecture, appropriate technology, gardening, and community building. So it's not just gardening, which most people come to permaculture ideas is food gardening. But it goes far beyond that. So that is basically what it is. And the reason I ask in your sign-in sheet, if anybody is really interested, I can send you uh, a good long list of links to different sites that talk about permaculture. A lot of the sites are trying to sell you their permaculture course, get you to come there. Um, so they're kind of useless as far as I'm concerned, but over the last six months I have gone through and gotten some really good sites. Okay. I also passed around earlier something called the Rhizome Collective and something called Rust, which is radical urban sustainability training and I, this is what we're going to be going to in March and the reason I like it is because it is urban you don't need acres of land to practice permaculture I wish more people who did have a lot of land would do that but they really don't so if you've got a little piece of ground and now my property is a hundred by 125 feet which includes the house so that's not exactly a big lot. It's a 50, 60 subdivision size lot. Of course, a lot of people have the same lot, but the house takes all of it. You know, you just got to walk way around it. So I really do have, and I have chickens, I have fruit trees, I have a garden. We're getting ready to put in a pond to raise tilapia. Um, all in its own time, of course. Now, there are principles involved in permaculture. The first one is care of the earth. You really have to take care of the earth. And of course, this implies all living things, plants, water, the land, etc. And that also implies that you're going to do it organically. You're not going to put poisons on the land if you want to take care of the land. Care of the people. Uh, the idea is to promote self-reliance and community responsibility. And also access to the resources. A lot of people do not have access to the resources of the land or water in this world. Most people in the United States do, but when you go to other countries, those are some things that they don't have access to. <coughs> Another principle is setting limits to population and consumption. Now, all of us say, oh, but I don't know how much I consume. But there's a lot of things that we do consume that we don't need to consume. And I'll get into that a, a little more. Do you repeat that? Okay. Setting limits to population and consumption. In other words, you're trying to give the surplus to those who need it. And I didn't say sell. I said give. One of the things permaculture does is it acknowledges that all life 
has intrinsic value. That means animal life, plant life, and human life. A lot of people look at the world and they say, okay, there's an animal. Why do I have to worry about that? Un I've heard the term is undesirable. Undesirable. I've flipped. <laughs> and I don't think they are undesirable. That was in a mm -hmm. deed restricted community newsletter. No vegetable gardens, they attract undesirables. Wow. Well, that's so wrong. <laughs> Probably. Um, yeah. Deed restricted communities. Sometimes, because most of our food is reasonably priced, we forget to look at its true cost. Mm -hmm. You know, you may pay, you know, 79 cents or 99 cents per <coughs> head of lettuce, which isn't really terrible. But you have to stop and think of the damage to the earth that most monocultures do because they are based on petroleum, fertilizers, pesticides, and those all have a cost, especially when we put it in our bodies. Farming is actually about eight times more inefficient than it was in 1945. Even though they used the big combines to dig it up, actually industrial farming is not efficient. And I, I know it produces a lot of food for us all to eat, but now they're coming out with studies saying that this food has very little uh, nutritional value in comparison to what it did 50 years ago. Mm. You know, they say you don't need to take uh, vitamins because you can get it from your nutrition. But if the soil is depleted, you're not going to get very much nutrition. Um, it also leads to massive soil erosion, um, loss of biodiversity, loss of wildlife habitat, contamination of our fruit and vegetables with the residues that are uh, introduced by the pesticides, greenhouse gases, and a lot of other undesirable things. Now, just because you um, are going to be giving up things to <coughs> create this new lifestyle, if you decide to, actually you're not. You're going to have a richer life and a more abundant life. Um, now, we may give up certain things, but by and large, not very many. Green economics and trading ventures, uh, waste treatment, and all these things are very important. We don't have a whole lot of control over some of it. However, we all have to eat. We all have to eat. Think about when you go to the grocery store, the quantity of food that you bring home, and how much is actually consumed. This country wastes a lot of food. And there are groups who, thankfully, among some of the younger generation who are called freegans, who regularly dumpster dive, get the good food out of the dumpsters, because usually there's nothing wrong with them. They may be a uh, past or sell by date. And then they turn around, not only to take care of themselves, but they give it to groups like Food Not Bombs. Okay. When we grow our own food, a lot of times you can't consume it all. So what do you do with what's left? Give it to your neighbors. Give it to whoever needs it. Don't let it go to waste. There is one thing... I just want to inject something there, too. For anyone who has <coughs> grown any of their own food, you might appreciate this statement. And if you haven't, this is really so true, is that there's nothing like 
giving away, presenting, or consuming something you've grown. It's a very nice feeling of accomplishment. Now, some of you say, well, I, you know, it's impossible for us to grow in our backyards everything we need to eat. There's just no way one person can do that. But you can grow an awful lot. The next thing you need to think about is joining a community-supported farm. Mm -hmm. They grow a lot of food. <coughs> it's really good. And I'm going to interject something here for you sweet water people. <laughs> Um, I do a lot of stir fry, and the first time we got our vegetables, there was some bok choy in it. So I cooked it, and my brother and my friend were there, and started raving. This is the best bok choy. I said, well, it didn't sit in a store for two weeks, or a week. You know, it didn't take a week to get it from where it was grown here. And then it, you know, they keep sprinkling it, but it still stays in the store for at least a week. <coughs> yeah. And this was really fresh. I think you got, uh, Willow had picked it up that day. And um, it was just out of this world. Now, I purposely don't grow bok choy because I've never had a lot of um, luck with it. So I prefer... You know, somebody else to do that. Now, I can, I can uh, grow mustard greens and collard greens and do a pretty good job of that. Some of the other things I have a little problem with. Now, we all have heard about the global warming that's being debated. Well, I don't know about anybody else, but when it's this warm in Florida, this time of the year, I believe in global warming. Um, <coughs> and as a result, we see a lot of the land around the world becoming deserts. Some of the islands are starting to be submerged, and it's only going to get worse. So it makes sense to me that as the global warming starts to affect the vegetables that they're now bringing from China, or India, or somewhere else, not to buy that, but to buy something locally grown and organic. Because sometimes you can get locally grown that isn't organic. We need to learn that <clears throat> we are not the masters of nature. We have no control whatsoever over nature. It's going to do what it's going to do. And, for example, um, I have all my winter vegetables out. And six weeks ago, it was so hot that I was infested with aphids. And I'm out there with my bottle of... Dr. Bronner's soap and with the garlic and the pepper and I'm out there spraying like crazy and it, I couldn't get rid of one patch. They were so bad and I had no ladybugs because all the neighbors around me spray everything. In fact, I've had to put up kind of a barrier in my backyard because the man who lives across the alley behind me goes down the alley spraying the weeds. You know, some of which happen to be edible. edible. But he didn't know that. So we have tried to control nature and it just isn't working. So why not begin to look at what nature does and incorporate that in to what we're doing? Obviously, you know, I needed more ladybugs. So I probably should have, you know, sent off an order to get the ladybugs. But as it was, I managed to get them under control by using soap and water which was really pretty good. Nature does not like a vacuum. So when you go out there and you start plowing up your backyard, um, if you're not in a big rush and you don't get out there the next day and plant your plants, you're going to get infested with weeds. 
because they'll come up when nothing else will. So what I do, which you can't really do on a big farm, is what is called no-dig gardening. And there is a little section in the handout about how to set up your garden without digging up everything. I put down a very heavy layer of wet papers. Then I put cardboard on top of that. Newspapers? Newspapers? Yeah. About an inch thick. Soak them down so they don't fly all over the neighborhood. <coughs> Takes me a while to get things done, so, you know. Put down cardboard and then start doing sheet mulching. I've trained two of my neighbors to give me all of their leaves. They come over and they dump it over in my yard and everybody's like, why are they doing that? I want your leaves. Don't bag them. Don't, don't use the plastic bags. Just haul them over in your trash cans and dump them. Then they get spread through my yard. I use straw. I use vegetable peelings. Now, I do have a regular compost bin. But if this is a new area that I want to grow things in, this is how I get rid of the grass. But the only thing I have found that weeds will still come up on top of all of that. And you just have to get out there and get rid of them. We only use about 20 species of vegetables that are grown on big industrialized farms. That's not very much. Now, there may be different varieties, but we only use a certain number of species, rice, wheat, millet, oats, and some and the different vegetables. It's really important in permaculture to look at what grows in your area and try to plant species that are compatible with your area. So observation becomes really, really important in permaculture. In fact, one of the things they say is to start really slow when you're starting to <coughs> transition. Because sometimes you will find varieties that are grown and do beautifully in another part of the country will not grow, especially in Florida. Florida is one of those places that defies the rule. Everything you do somewhere else, you can't do here. Things that you can grow here uh, up north, you cannot grow here. But we can grow a lot of things that other people have to grow in a greenhouse. I mean, we have a great diversity of, of natural or native plants that will grow here. I'm trying my hand now at growing weeds edible weeds because they do so well in my yard. <laughs> so if I'm going to have weeds, I want some that I can eat. You know, like lamb's quarters and some of the others that, that are edible here. I used to have dandelions in my yard everywhere. I haven't seen a dandelion in my neighborhood in years. They don't grow there anymore because they have been eradicated. So my next thing is I really want to start some dandelions in my yard because it is an edible plant, does well, as long as you're not spraying it with pesticides. So sometimes you have to look at things that are not what other people call normal, okay? They really don't call it normal. Dandelions profound medicinal plant too. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's, it's something that, you know, in the natural world, nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted in the natural world. Now, we are wasteful, but in the natural world, there is a place for everything. 